we are dying. We are dying a slow death. The nightmare scenario, when you're driving an electric car, the battery is empty and you just come to a stop. When you drive electric, you usually plan carefully in advance where and when you can recharge. But what happens if your planning fails and suddenly the battery level drops to almost zero? We conducted a practical test, driving various electric cars until they come to a stop and observing how they behave when they reach their last few kilometers. Which models give early warnings, which still have reserves, and where things suddenly get critical, you'll find out now. We're carrying out the vehicle study at an ADEC test facility in Penzing, together with employees of the Yellow Angels. I'm accompanying Heiser editor Sven Hansen with the camera. Yes, hello. Today we're in Penzing at the ADEC Mobility Test Center. This is a former airport, so there's a lot of space and we need it today because we're going to run electric cars empty, really down to the very last bit, until they can't go any further and if possible even a little beyond that. We have six vehicles here that we're going to drive. There's this Kia for starters. We have a Neo, a BYD and a Tesla. There's also a VW and a Volvo. And uh, for all uh, six, we want to find out how far you can drive before you have to continue on foot. We have 2.3 kilometers of runways at our disposal for this. So things are going to get pretty intense and um, we'll document what happens in the vehicles and see how far we get today. Our test will proceed as follows. First, all vehicles will drive at any speed until they each reach 20% battery charge. From 20% onward, we'll drive at a constant speed of 100 km h, as long as that's possible. We'll document any warning messages and, if applicable, any limitations of the vehicles. We keep driving until the car can no longer reach a speed of 50 km. At that point, we turn it off. Finally, we also test whether the vehicle would start up again at this stage. I'll be driving with my colleague Sven and will be closely documenting the drive in the Kia EV6. However, all six vehicles are equipped with cameras so we can see what's happening in each model. One more piece of information in advance, the test vehicles are brand new. Only the Tesla and VW models have been in use at ADAC for testing purposes for a bit longer. For our test at low battery charge levels, this is only of limited relevance. Nevertheless, we mention it here for the sake of transparency. The progression of the indicated remaining range and the battery level of the cars is almost completely identical. At 20%, the remaining range in the vehicles is as follows. The Tesla still has the greatest remaining range at 95 kilometers. The vehicles in the middle range are between 70 and 85 kilometers. At the bottom is the Volvo, with about 60 kilometers of remaining range. The Kia still shows about 70 kilometers of remaining range at 20%. Both it and the Tesla now have the battery indicator glowing orange. No other warnings appear for now. So when the range drops below 20%, the car doesn't sound any alarm bells yet. With a range of 70 kilometers, that's understandable, since under almost all circumstances, the next charging station should still be easily reachable. No car really puts any pressure on the driver at this point. Between um, 20 and 10% charge, um, none of the vehicles show any uh, noticeable limitations, no reduced acceleration, no shutting off of the air conditioning or anything like that. At least nothing that would be noticeable at 100 kilometers per hour. Once the charge drops to 10%, the warning messages become more pronounced. All right, quick update. We've now dropped from over 20 down to 10. Our battery indicator is uh, now glowing red. Um, we've received the second warning message. That one was a bit more forceful and the power was reduced, although to be honest, I can't really feel it at the moment. I'll try flooring it again in a moment when we actually accelerate to 100. Yeah, and now we're curious because we're getting into the single digit percentage range. 9% left now. Well, so it might be uh, reduced, but if it is, it's not by much. Um, Honestly, it doesn't feel restricted at all right now. Many cars would probably limit the top speed at this point. We're not going to test that now because we assume that anyone who gets into trouble at this stage probably isn't going to try driving to the next charging station at uh, 180 kilometers h. At the very least, it wouldn't be a good idea because the truth is if you drive slowly, you will arrive more safely and actually faster since if you end up stranded, it'll take even longer. Below the 10% mark, most of the test vehicles start to become more insistent. The BYD issues a written prompt to charge. 
the NEO recommends reducing the use of the air conditioning. Interestingly, at a speed of 100 km h, none of the cars really show any noticeable reduction in power. With the VW, for example, the power during acceleration is slightly reduced, but driving over 100 is still no problem at all. So for instance, if you're driving on a country road, you don't have to worry about slowing down traffic in your lane. For the first time, at least in the Kia A, a throttling becomes noticeable. While at 100 km h up to 5%, there was still no noticeable change. Now you can feel something. So we've now reached 5%. There was once a somewhat aggressive jolt at 10%, but now time to refuel. The vehicle has already told us twice now to look for a charging station. We didn't do that, but otherwise we're continuing on now. So we're now at 2%. It could get interesting at any moment now. The power is now actually throttled. The throttle response from the accelerator pedal is no longer what it was before. Um, whether I could still reach 160 or 140, I don't know. I can still drive at 100 just fine. So I could still keep up with traffic on the highway. 7% remaining range, 55 kilometers driven, and 2% left on the battery. It won't go much further. Except for the VW, the vehicles are now issuing increasingly clear warnings. The battery indicators are turning red, messages are urging to charge, and the power is gradually decreasing in all vehicles. Nevertheless, all vehicles can still reach 100 kilometers age without much trouble. Only the Volvo is now accelerating very sluggishly. Uh, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. I knew it, we can still make it to 100. Interesting with the BYD. When the battery drops below 5%, the vehicle no longer displays the remaining range, but instead urges you to charge soon and reduces the power from around 190 kilowatts to 120 kilowatts. The charge level drops one last time from 1% to 0%. Now it gets exciting to see what happens. Do the vehicles shut off immediately? Motor power restricted. Turtle symbol, zero percent battery. That means I have no battery left at all now. I have no remaining range. And now the power is clearly limited when accelerating as well. Turtle symbol in orange. But I'm still reaching my 100. All the cars managed to keep going for about 10 more kilometers at a speed of 100 kilometers. Then they all slowly start to run out of steam. Yeah, motor power is restricted. Acceleration is getting worse and worse. 25 kilowatts. We are dying a slow death. Honestly, it kind of feels like running out of gas right now in the sense that we're squeezing out every last bit we can. But that's just a feeling, you know? Honestly, it doesn't really feel like it's strictly or rigidly programmed or anything. It's more like the batteries are just giving everything they've got left, you know? Uh, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. I'm not dead yet. We said I have to be able to drive 50, then I'm not dead yet. I'm still getting 13 kilowatts out of my battery. I kind of get the impression that Kia A is really giving everything it's got here, just whatever is available. And um, it doesn't feel like a programmer is deciding how much the car can still do, but rather that whatever the battery can deliver is just being used. Otherwise, there's no crazy blinking or anything like that. The power just keeps dropping. 10 kilowatts. With 10 kilowatts, of course, you don't get much to the motor, but 64 kilometers per hour. So for us, I think this is looking like a very calm situation now. I'm going to accelerate again now. And I think this curve was our last curve in the Kia EV6, which carried us far, even without a battery, and is still accelerating. It's still going, it's still going. 42 kilometers per hour. The question is, can we make it to 50 kilometers per hour one more time? An exciting race. 47 and I think driver assistance system limited, uh, radar blocked, I don't know about that right now. Motor power limited, we have an exclamation mark. We suddenly have four exclamation marks, but that was the driver assistance system which seems to think there's something wrong with the radar. 48, oh now this is the first time it's dropped from 49 to 48. So we're stopping here, saying goodbye to our Kia. Stop with 78 kilometers per hour on the speedometer. Here, gradually slowed down to below 50. Four vehicles are slowly losing more and more of their maximum speed until they can no longer reach 50 kilometers per hour. As a driver, at least you can clearly tell that the end is near. The two outliers are BYD and VW. After the BYD has driven about 16 more kilometers at 0% and is just barely able to maintain 50 kilometers per hour, the vehicle automatically shifts into neutral and lets the car coast to a stop. Although it was clear that the end was near, it still happens rather suddenly. The same goes for the VW. 
the ID3 drives another 10 kilometers at 0% and even manages to reach up to 140 kilometers per hour. However, after those 10 kilometers, the power is drastically reduced on very short notice. Within just over a kilometer, the VW can only manage five more kilometers. No remaining range now. Vehicle needs to be charged, the car says. So now we can only crawl along. The car is rolling, but I can't accelerate anymore. I mean, I can press the accelerator, but nothing happens. Once all of the cars can no longer make it past 50 kilometers, we then carefully proceed to turn them off. We let it sit for a bit, turn it off, and now we're just trying to start it up again and see what condition it's in and how far we can still get with it. The goal now would be, if necessary, even at a slower speed to somehow at least make it to the edge, or if need be, just as far as the tow truck. Brake pedal and start button, let's just Welcome see. So that all looks great. 0% energy. The ventilation is about to start up. Drive carefully. Observe the traffic rules. Try switching to drive mode. Uh, and that probably answers the question already. Um, we can't start the vehicle anymore. We'll try one more time to see if the vehicles will start again. With five models, it doesn't work and we can't switch to drive mode anymore. Only the Neo starts up again and even manages to drive a bit further, about 20 kilometers. I've turned it off once now and I'm trying to get back to the hall. So after turning it off and starting it again, it accelerates at a crawl. I'm flooring it and it takes about 10 seconds to reach 20 kilometers per hour. First, the reassuring result from the test. None of the electric cars shut down immediately or broke down at 0%. Most manufacturers seem to have included a bit of reserve charge in case you end up in a critical situation. Both the Kia and the other cars managed to go about 15 to 20 kilometers further with an officially empty battery. The vehicles mainly differed in two aspects. On the one hand, the frequency or intrusiveness of the warnings the models from BYD, Tesla and Volvo gave slightly more frequent notifications about the low battery level. The Tesla in particular became increasingly noticeable with acoustic alerts as it got closer to the end. When accelerating, the message pops up again. Driving not possible, battery charge too low, it's sluggish here. On the other hand, there was the reduction of driving performance before coming to a stop. Although all of them maintained decent driving performance for a long time up to 100 kilometers the way they ended differed. While Kia, Neo, Tesla and Volvo gradually lost power over the last few kilometers, BYD and VW stopped quite suddenly. As a driver, this makes it harder to judge the situation. At the very least, you want to be able to reach a parking spot or in an emergency on the highway, the shoulder. So to sum up, all manufacturers have some reserves left when the battery reaches 0%. This gives the driver some reassurance, but it is still advisable to inform yourself about your own vehicle in advance, since not every model behaves the same way. How do the power reduction stages work? How quickly is the power limited? How much farther can I go? The more you know your car in detail, the better prepared you'll be in an emergency. And despite the reassuring knowledge that it's not immediately over at 0%, we recommend just like the ADEC does that as soon as the battery display drops below 10%, you should head for the next charging station. Even if it's just a regular household socket for your emergency charging cable. Because in winter temperatures, on steep inclines or with an aging battery, the reserve might be smaller than you expect. If you enjoyed the test, feel free to subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. If you want even more detailed information about the journey of the six vehicles, we've linked the corresponding article in the video description. Otherwise, that's it from us for now. Feel free to check out our next video as well. Until then, take care and see you soon.